Garlic printed cloth. I like the gritty. Oh my gosh, look in here. Can you see that? <laughs> Is this open? <gasps> Hello. This is amazing. There's an upstairs. Oh my gosh. There's an upstairs. Why is that so funny? How much are the is it, how much are the prices? This is crazy. This is how much room you have to walk. <laughs> Can you guys see this? Amazing. Quilter's paradise, I guess. How do you ever move? Look at this. What do you say? Like, I'll have the one on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Up to hide, the <laughs> <laughs> to hide the mess. Get a picture of it. What's that? I yeah. Know. Oh my god. Oh, we even organized it like that. You know what? The, all that sports. That's a. That's a porch. It's like a maze of fabric bolts, way over our heads. This is crazy good. Chickens, <laughs> chickens, bonk, bonk. Oh my gosh, look at this turn. <laughs> good thing, good thing you didn't eat the watermelon. <laughs> You'd never be able to pass through. Wow, it is, it's a maze of bolted. Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> okay, I found what I like. Oh my gosh, that is stunning. How do you get out of here? We have to live here now. <laughs> Six ninety nine a yard. Yep. Oh god, <laughs> dominoes. Run. <laughs> Stay. Oh my gosh. All right, I think we better go this way. <laughs> Oh, look at the quilts. Oh, beautiful. Look at the banister on the staircase. This is hands down the best store I've ever been in. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. How long has the store been here? Um, since the uh, 1800s. Wow. 
It was a grocery store originally. You have it to was. pick up a brochure. Oh, I will. I will. Yeah. I'm Karen, Lavender Clothesline. I'm local and I have a YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So I tell people where to shop. I will oh. definitely be sending people this way. Fantastic. Wow. Look at the, oh, this is stunning. Oh. oh, these are fantastic. Look at this. We'll have to get a brochure. Okay, this is my favorite. That's cool. I love this one. Oh, that is nice. Yeah, it's really nice. This is gorgeous. How much do they want for it? See a tag? See it on the back? Four thirty nine. That is not bad at all. Oh, that's so pretty. I love the colors. You go first, <laughs> in case I fall, fall into you. Cow tails. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Remember this when we were little? Yeah, they're still all penny. Do you need candy? You want something? Yeah, let me see this fish. <clears throat> Karen? Nan is the owner. Nan? She's back at the cutting table. Thank you. So over the course of the day, we must have gone to, I'm going to say about 10 stores, maybe even more. We spent 12 hours shopping and thrifting and had a great time. We ate snacks along the way as usual and just had a really fun time. Here we visited a thrift store that had different parts to the thrift store. There was an outdoor tent cell and this indoor part that had furniture and different home decor pieces. They also had a clothing section and this whole thrift store took about probably over an hour to go through. So here I'm just going to insert some footage and show you some of the things that we saw. We did not pick up a lot at this store, but I had a really great time looking at everything. Many rooms, lots of donations and lots of items. I don't think this was consignment. I think this store just sold, you know, what they owned. Here we were looking at a quilt and noticing how deteriorated the pieces were. I don't even think this was real silk, so I'm not sure what was going on here but we looked at every piece and talked about quality and what happens to different material items as they aged. But yeah, just really fun talking about what we were picking up, what we like to sell, and I wanted to bring you guys along with us. So many thrift stores have different auction areas. I believe these are called silent auctions where you find an item that you want to bid on and you place a, I'm going to call it a private bid or a silent bid. And then the person that gives the silent bid that is highest wins the item after a certain amount of time. So this quilt in this showcase really drew my attention, but it felt like I wasn't sure what I should pay for this quilt. 
So when I don't know a price and the price is not set, I could leave a bid, but this location was quite far from my house and I don't know that I wanted to come back for it. I did want to share it with you guys because I thought it was beautiful. I think a lot of the pieces that are silent auction in these cases are what they deem as the higher end items. Here I'm pointing to a copper bowl. I saw the same exact copper bowl in Goodwill. So pretty sure it was the same item. Not quite sure how it made it to another thrift store. Maybe somebody purchased it and redonated it or purchased it to contribute to the store's silent auction. That could always be. Right away, this pillow caught my attention. I called it an origami pillow. I've never seen this. Now it was mass produced. You can see the labels. And how much did they want for this pillow? Hopefully I flip this tag over. There it is, $8. Which I think this store had some really interesting pieces if you were furnishing an apartment or a house, you were looking for new decor pieces. But overall, I didn't see a lot in this shop to be able to flip. There we are saying hi. <laughs> Roger is a very good sport. He's just a go with the flow type of guy. There is a cannonball bed. I think I might've had one of those in the seventies. So if you ever see a bed with those big round knobs, I believe it's called cannonball. I really liked the print of these linens and it's so funny because my bedroom has hardly any color and yet I'm always attracted to beautiful patterns in bold colors. Lots of furniture, linens. Here I was looking at this nightstand. I believe this is called Waterfall Design. I think this might be 1940s, total guess. But when you see the Art Deco type of handles and this very rolled edge design, Waterfall is the name of it. Very heavy. I believe those pieces are made out of oak. This couch was a velour or a velvet, I think 1970s maybe, very geometric pattern. And here I'm just gonna give a scope of what was in this part of the store. So this whole location is huge. I will try to leave the name of the thrift store location and all of the information in the notes of this video. Here I'm falling in love with this cowrie shell print. I think this is a cowrie shell, C-O-W-E-R-I-E. -E. And I was very tempted to buy this. I'm running out of walls in my house. Anything seashell, you know, that's beautiful quality catches my attention. So here this is just showing, you know, a little bit of the information. And there is a slight chance I might go back and get that for personal use. I might put that in my office. I have not decided yet if it's still there, but it's a good excuse to go back. $4 for a picture frame. Very reasonable. I didn't feel this was an especially quick seller. I think, you know, picture frames, photo frames are very heavily saturated on eBay. When I find a high end one, or something really unique, I will go ahead and buy it. And here I can tell something is catching my attention and it is this beach, this ombre beach wooden plank wood sign. $8, if my daughter Melissa lived closer, I would have bought this for her house. These are her colors and she lives very close to Anna Maria Island. That would have been very bulky to ship. Sometimes things on, on the film don't translate how big they are in real life.
I did really like this store. I didn't get to look at everything because we had made the plan, Roger and I made the plan to fit in as many thrift stores as possible and that man can shop. So we traveled, like I said, for 12 hours and pretty much filled his car, which I will be doing a haul probably after this video, you know, my next video, so you can see what I actually wound up buying. Spoiler alert, I did find blow molds of a nativity scene, Mary, Jesus, and Joseph in blow molds. So I <laughs> put them in Roger's car. <laughs> and um, yeah, and we were just packing the car out. Roger pointing out a troll doll. I did look for a date on this little troll doll. I don't know about the different dates. I thought they might have been marked. I don't think this one was especially old. This back part was kind of like sporting equipment and hardware, hard, yeah, hardware goods. And leather mitts, leather gloves are always interesting to me. Uh, not that I'm very baseball -y or softball -y. I have never played softball in my life. I think even in gym class, I don't know, I was probably talking to friends. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I think we all can. But here I'm finding this mitt. This looked different to me. So I'm guessing this is a catcher's mitt. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. And there I'm showing Nakona, $5. Now we did need new lacing, but in my vast knowledge, I was estimating that would not be a challenge. And I do wind up picking up that mitt or glove. But when I looked at the rest of this, it made me very tired. Now we are on to the part of the store that is clothing and accessories. They had a lot of leather goods, but this store's accessories were quite highly priced, but beautifully set up and really nice accessory items. The clothing, in my opinion, was just okay. And when I did find pieces that were better, they were very up priced. Here I'm looking at some Western boots. These had quite a bit of wear and they were calling them decorative at this point. So I think it's them acknowledging, the store acknowledging that these had quite a bit of wear to them. Aeroglide. And you can see the wear on the toes there. Maybe they would have made nice planters. I've seen people do that. A beautiful saddle. So that is a Western saddle, right guys? I know there's English and Western. I don't know if there are other types. Another pair of boots, little better condition, $20, but I really didn't think this was something that I was, you know, gonna seriously consider. I really like bringing you guys along with me to show you what I'm looking at. So that's just Primark but any, any blouse, any item with birds on it, I'm all over. I love a good bird print. This is Joan Voss, not a high dollar item. I liked the colorway on that. Here Roger's considering an Eagle's jacket. This man has sold more items than I even realize. I think he probably has over a million sales, I'm gonna guess. That could be a total guess, but I'm thinking it might be close to that, if not over that. So over the course of thrifting and selling for that long, your eye just knows after a while, you know what you have sold things for. And I am really looking forward to growing each year in my knowledge. I will try to blur out people's faces. In a small tight space, it's very hard not to have people on film. And you guys know me that I really try to be considerate about that. But sometimes I do wind up catching people in the footage a little bit, but I will always try to be respectful. Even though I'm a summer girl, I really start in August to look at winter items. I like to get winter items on quickly because I think people turn on a dime. At one point they're enjoying summer and then school starts and they're kind of over the hot weather and they start to get autumn or, or winter minded. And I like to have items in my store ready for resale. Whether that means, you know, heavy wool coats or different 
um, outdoor sports equipment for winter sports. Just looking at different sparkly shoes because every sparkly thing catches my attention. A lot of the stores do separate out their better quote unquote brands, a little more trendy items. I always do take a look, but generally I stay away from curated things like this because it means that they are, you know, just making it a higher price. $20 for a faux fur vest. In the past, I have purchased those for five or six dollars and I do sell them. They are a slower sell than I would expect. Here is a handbag that caught my attention. This is Sack Roots. I almost always pick up sack roots and you can see why, beautiful. Just so pretty, $15 was too high for my buy-in. If this was, I'm gonna say five or $6, I would have taken that. Again, another faux fur coat. An antique wicker buggy or carriage, a pram, all of those words. I believe I have never been to this location before. So when I find a new store, usually the first time is all about exploring when it's the first time. Not to say I don't pick up items, but when I'm filming and seeing, you know, a store that I've never been in, very exciting to me because as you can imagine, and with this much thrifting, I feel like I've seen every store multiple times. But this one I had not seen and really enjoyed the shopping here. Here I'm finding a pair of Fox racing pants. These are motocross and the hat. They wanted $40 for the pants. I recently just picked up a black pair from the bins. I paid under $2 and what did they sell for? I think 40, don't quote me on that. So this place selling them for 40 was probably right on the mark, but no room for resale. Now we are at the East Earl Goodwill which is in East Earl. This is up by Shady Maple Smorgasbord. I have shown that restaurant before. No time for a smorgasbord today. <laughs> we were eating on the run. I think for lunch we had sandwiches from Wawa, which I love a good Wawa sandwich. And we just ate in the car and then went on to the next store. So here I'm just gonna put a little bit of this footage to music so you guys can see what the store is like. I have shown East Earl before. What I love about this store is it is a very old fashioned Goodwill. Okay, here I'm finding an elephant vest, Soho. I don't know that name, but look how good this vest is. All of these elephants are applique. I don't give that a second thought at a $5 buy-in. Yes, 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 get in my cart, please. finding a very unusual top. I liked this teardrop cutout. This is BB. Look at those beads. Epaulettes. I think that's what shoulder design is called like that. I leave that behind. I do still pick up BB when it's a very large spell out logo across the chest. If it says, you know, BB in bright letters across the chest, I pick it up. But anything else, I don't pick up BB. I do have to run a comp to see if BB is selling at a higher price. I have not checked it in a while. Here's a blouse vintage. I didn't care for the design, but blouses like that I still am picking up if it's a very bold print in equestrian type. This was just a little child's top. So you can see I'm not going through piece by piece. I am just using my eye to pick out what I think might be a good piece. This is made well. I do still pick up made well, but not all pieces. I judge each made well piece by its own merit. 
I did like this that it was kind of like a polka dot with a raised yarn uh, pattern, I'm gonna say. Crossover, wrap blouse. I did like it, but I felt the size was too small. In my opinion, an extra small, a small, is a much longer sitting item, much harder sell than when it is a large and larger. So as you can tell, just quickly up and down each aisle, because like I said, we must have hit, I'm gonna say at least 12 stores. It was a long day. I liked the embroidery on that blouse, on that jean shirt. At this point, I think it's just about me <laughs> picking up pieces that I'm attracted to. I would have worn either one of those blouses. It's funny how quickly shopping for resale turns into shopping for what I want to see in my closet. With creating these YouTube videos, I try to have a little bit of a choice of what to wear. I love a good pair of new tassel earrings and a pretty blouse. So sometimes when I'm looking through the racks, I'm looking to see colors and patterns that might translate well on these videos. And then I will wear the blouse for the video, wash it and flip it. I did like that orange blouse, that was pretty. Fashion Avenue, I have never heard of that before and that was quite see-through. So as you can see, I still only have the elephant vest in my cart. I was not finding a lot at this store. 